Hi and welcome to the latest IoT Now interview. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Vikram Gupta, who is Senior Vice President and General Manager for IoT Compute and Wireless at Infineon Technologies. Vikram, good to have you here. Jeremy, it's great to be here. Looking forward to the conversation. And where do we find you today? Are you at your base in San Jose, California? Yes, I'm, I'm in the Bay Area and, you know, from my home office, like I've been for the last year and a half, but things are looking up here. So I'm, I'm feeling good about getting back and about. That's really good to hear. So Infineon Technologies, for those who are not familiar with it, is a global provider of semiconductor solutions. And to give people an idea of the company's scale, um, in the year ending September 30th last year, Infineon achieved revenues of more than eight and a half billion euros. So since the acquisition of um, US-based Cypress Semiconductor, that was also in April of last year. Infineon is now one of the top 10 semiconductor companies worldwide. Is that about right? You, you got it. And we're very excited about the merger of the two companies as the product portfolios are extremely complementary. And it sets up Infineon really well with a, a multitude of technologies for the future. Indeed. So what are you finding are the main challenges that IoT equipment makers have to deal with these days when looking for reliable and seamless connectivity? Yeah, Jeremy, so you, you know that smart devices are being deployed in a number of different environments. And uh, this is whether it's in the home, automobiles, industrial or rural settings. Uh, there's all kinds of environments where these devices are going into. And these smart devices typically have some sensors, they get some data from the environment, and then they have to do something with the data, they process it and communicate it with either each other or they have to send it back up to the cloud. Now, if that communication link is uh, not reliable or is spotty, then you're gonna diminish the value of the smart device. And what this ends up resulting in is you end up with bad reviews from for the IoT equipment maker, and that's obviously not a good thing. So it's very important that whatever connectivity you have in IoT systems, it's extremely reliable, and it's something that can withstand all kinds of interferences. Um, and you also have to be mindful of range, especially when it comes to wireless connectivity. At Infineon, when we design our products for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices, we make sure that we're designing it with the IoT use case in mind. And we put a lot of emphasis on uh, reliable and uh, uh, reliable connections and range. So um, you, you talk about the emphasis, how is Infineon helping to overcome these problems in products and solutions and tools? So in, in, in general, the way we look at it is, uh, you know, we want to be a one-stop shop for uh, providing full system solutions for the IoT across a number of different verticals. And, and, uh, and this is true, obviously, for our focused markets. And what we do here is we offer all the key components necessary in, in an IoT system. So you can think of sensors, you, microcontrollers, connectivity, security, power, and so on. We look at each of these components and, and define these products to be best in class clearly. And what we try to do is we, we bring all of these products within our uh, Modus toolbox software platform so that embedded developers can, can use them uh, easily to bring IoT systems to the market. We also believe in leveraging the ecosystem so that uh, we can make the journey of a broad base of customers uh, very easy in terms of getting their products out. So what this means is we try to take a holistic approach for the customer journey, uh, you know, to to essentially bring their products to the market. And if you really step back and look at it, um, these components that I mentioned, uh, whether it's wireless connectivity, microcontrollers, sensors, and so on, we have a ton of experience actually already taking IoT products uh, with these components, um, you know, to the market. And our, our aim for the future is really to try to encapsulate all that experience that we have and bring it together as value in an easy to use fashion 
for developers in the future so that uh, we can reach a broad base of customers. So that's how we look at deploying our solutions and reaching a vast array of customers. COVID, of course, is kind of the elephant in the room, and it's been uh, affecting us all in so many different ways, some positive as well as many negative. What effect has COVID had on the speed of converting analog products and services into digital offerings? Yeah, I mean, look, we're all still feeling the effects of COVID on a number of personal fronts, and, um, you know, it's affected life in general, clearly. And 21 is looking up, uh, but 20 was quite a year. Um, so having said that, though, I think COVID did accelerate a whole bunch of uh, trends from a technology point of view. I mean, video conferencing, you know, the way we are talking today, e-commerce, uh, more people relying on actually, uh, you know, uh, wearables and so on for personal well-being. Just this notion of remote work, uh, how you actually entertain yourself at home with more streaming uh, gaming, you know, and, uh, and also contactless payments and automation in general. So, uh, you know, besides all of this, there's also been a huge uptick of smart devices because people want to be more in control of their environment um, and, and sort of create that personal space, if you will, uh, which suits them. So all of these are going to have a lasting effect, frankly, on um, digitalization and an and acceleration of IoT across a number of uh, consumer and industrial settings. And, um, you know, we at Infineon believe that a lot of these trends are here to stay for the long haul and our portfolio, product portfolio is well set up to serve these trends. That's essentially uh, a very positive story. One of the things that I found when I was uh, doing some research ahead of our call was that Infineon has a new solution uh, to provide reliable, high-quality infrared images and 3D data for security-related applications. I find that fascinating. I'm I'm reading about uh, support for face authentication and mobile payment. Can you tell us a bit about what you and your partners are offering here that's different? And whilst you're on the subject, I mean, do you have any metrics for the future size of this market? Yeah, so all of this is uh, made possible by our uh, 3D time of flight image sensor portfolio. And these are essentially single chip emit sensors that are sunlight robust, highly scalable, and they're ready for integration into a vast array of consumer, automotive, and industrial applications. Essentially, what these sensors do is that they, um, once they get embedded into you know, systems, they acquire a real 3D map of the scene in front of them. You know, essentially, you can think of taking your surroundings, the object, and the people in front of the device and then transforming it into digital space in real time. So you have a 3D view of what's in front of you. And this enables clearly face ID for authentication. And interestingly, this actually works with or without masks. So um, how this is actually useful is you can imagine uh, incorporating these sensors into a smartphone behind the glass without having to worry about, you know, having a cutout or a, uh, or a notch uh, or a, a large bezel forehead on the phone, which will which really leads to you know uh, improvement from an industrial design point of view um, for smartphones in the future. So you can have edge to edge displays with these sensors embedded behind the glass in a sense to do face ID authentication. And um, you know this obviously is useful for applications such as um, uh, once you authenticate for access as well as for mobile payments. So we are very excited about this technology and uh, we think it has a huge potential. Based on our estimates, the, the growth is you know, upwards of uh, 30%, 30 from a component annual growth rate point of view. And we think it'll actually be in about you know, 500 to 600 million um, devices by 2025. So huge potential here. This is huge. Um, one of the other things that's sort of really developed recently, there seems to be an increasing recognition of something that maybe should have been obvious to us all, but that um, the industry has just sort of understood that anything can be connected, 
but it doesn't obviously mean that everything should be connected. Just proving the business case is absolutely critical. Um, are, are we now entering an era where there's a better understanding of intelligent connection, i.e. AI and edge computing deciding how much or indeed how little data needs to be sent to the cloud center? Yeah, okay. So that was a really good question, Jeremy. And I think there's always uh, this topic that comes up about the, uh, the, the value and usefulness of um, smart devices. And if you really look at smart devices that are being deployed today, you have uh, you know, typically a sensor that is sensing the environment. You get the data, uh, a processing element does something with it on the device, and then you have connectivity which sends it all the way back to the cloud. And in the cloud, you have um, uh, you know, analytics in terms of uh, AI or, or, or other software that does something useful with the data and either sends out a notification or it gets back to the device to do something meaningful in the environment of the device. Now, as technology evolves and we are able to get more processing, for the same cost and for the same power or even in fact better power, what you're gonna start seeing is that some of the uh, decisions that were being made in the cloud are going to increasingly get pushed onto the device. So you can think of ML frameworks getting pushed onto the device. And why this is useful is because now if you go back to the sensor which senses the data, you can actually do something meaningful um, with that framework that you have on the device and give a much better response in real time. So you reduce the latency. In the case of consumer applications, you're ap actually operating in a much more uh, contextually aware situation. It actually lends to a better user experience and probably helps with power consumption as well because you're not now trying to communicate with the cloud and so on and so forth. So uh, it, this is just going to give a better experience for consumers. In an industrial setting, you're gonna have far better outcomes if uh, you have these devices that are able to just be a little bit more intelligent. So I do think that you're gonna start seeing more of these smart devices becoming intelligent devices, and this trend is gonna continue. And we at Infineon are uh, absolutely believers in this trend, and we are looking at bringing more solutions in the space to the market in the future. So, Vikram, if people want to understand a little bit more about what you're doing uh, in these areas, where can they go to find out? I would go to the Infineon website, start from there and navigate from there. We are putting a lot of um, uh, important information and collateral around um, the IoT. It's a, it's a huge focus area for us, and um, that's a great starting point. Brilliant. Vikram, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks too for your time. Join us again very soon for another IoT Now video. Bye for now.